Jesus did what no one could ever do, but the Holy Son of God could. He carried out the task for which he was chosen to be our Savior and to bring us joy. This message is from Rack of Ages Lutheran Church in Payson, Arizona. Ancient faith for today's world. Christmas Day 2022. Hebrews 1, 1-9. There's a pretty funny video clip of a weatherman who's really doing his first time doing a live TV forecast. And the camera comes on him and he's just standing there telling everybody how unqualified he feels for his position and he can't believe he got the job. And then after a brief pause, he's told, you're alive. And then like a deer staring into the headlights, he looks at the camera in amazement and says, wait, I'm not ready. And then the person repeats, we're live. And so he begins to share the forecast for the nation. As it pans out, it shows a picture of the United States. And he looks at the picture and he points to part of the map and says, this, uh, this state right here, you, you see, what, what state is that, he says? I'm not sure what state that is, but if you see the, the big swirly things in your state, watch out. There's a big storm headed your way. And if you're next to one of these, one of these states here, you're in trouble. There's a, a pretty big storm, so, so watch out. And you can see he stumbles through the forecast. Obviously, qualifications matter. And we count on those who give us a forecast of the weather. And sometimes those who are underqualified for certain positions can cause damage or harm, or with a great crashing failure, a little bit of humor. What about the qualifications for the one that God has chosen to bring us joy? We'll be looking at that this Christmas day as we look at the word of our God from Hebrews chapter one. And there it mentions for us the qualifications that God has listed and given found only in the one he has chosen, his son, who he chose to bring us joy. The Red to the Hebrew starts out by saying that Jesus is God's chosen spokesperson. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. And God had done that, right? He, he had chosen many spokespeople, the prophets who spoke throughout the pages of the Old Testament. We see God's message recorded. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. God's ultimate spokesperson, the prophet, is the Son of God. And that's the one that we see mentioned at the start of the letter to the Hebrews. And here we find the, the letter to the Hebrews is going to list for us seven qualifications regarding our Savior. Seven things which can assure us as we look at Jesus and as we might begin to ponder what God has done through his Son this Christmas day, we see why we can be fully confident that God has chosen the right one, the only one, who could do what we need and bring us joy. We'll look at each of these seven characteristics or qualifications of the Son. It says, His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things. Jesus, the Son of God, is the sole heir of receiving everything. It might have seemed from what we celebrate at Christmas, that he was only going to receive a small inheritance from a carpenter, a lowly family that he grew up in. But no, the, the Son of God, Jesus, is the heir, the sole heir of everything. He was born, yes, in a lowly place, but to him belonged the entire world. Sometimes if you're born into a family, you stand to receive something. But Jesus, when he took on human flesh and came into the world, was already owner and destined to receive it all as his own, even according to his human nature. He's the perfect choice, because everything is his. It goes on next to describe the next qualification. He's not only the sole heir of all things, he is the source of all things. Qualification 2 reads, Through whom also he made the universe. You see, Jesus, yes, was born. He came into this world and took on human flesh. 
but he was like no ordinary man. He was not a created being. He is the one who created all things. He is the word through whom the Father created this world. He is the word incarnate. It says, through him he made the universe. What better choice could God have for the one who would come down in human form to save the universe than the very one through whom he made the universe. He is the divine creator, the son of God, the perfect choice to save the world. Not only is he the source of the universe, the sun is the shining radiance of God's glory. Jesus, when he was born, looked so lowly. But what the writer of the Hebrews reveals is, when you looked on Jesus, you saw the shining glory of God. What better way for God to show us his glory than the face of his son? And though it did not shine with radiance bright, not when he walked this earth for the, the first 30 years or so, he was showing us, shining with the glory of God as he showed the love of God. The glory of God is seen through the Son who came to this world. The glory of God is seen in the love of the Son. The glory of God is seen as he shines in glory, carrying out the plan of God's glory for this world to redeem it from sin. It shows us what a glorious God we have as we look at Jesus. Who's better qualified to shine God's glory than the one who came down how else could God show his glory unless he came down to show it in the face of Jesus? But more than that, the Son is the exact representation of his being. He not only shines to show us God's glory, he shows us God. When the disciples asked Jesus, show us the Father, Jesus could say, don't you know me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When Jesus lived in this world, he was an exact representation of the Father because as the Son of God, Jesus showed us God. Jesus showed us the compassion of God as he showed and displayed love for those around him. Jesus showed us the zealous jealousy of a holy God as he drove out the money changers from the temple, what he called his Father's house. And in holy zeal, he chased out everything that it showed disrespect for the Father. And Jesus, in holiness, spoke the word of God against sin. But Jesus also, in great mercy, sought and went after the lost, showed the heart of the Father for a fallen world. And Jesus showed us the Father's love as he showed the full extent of his love. And it says next, the next quality that's listed, the next qualification for the son who was chosen, it says, he sustains all things by his powerful word. Not only did Jesus create this world, but Jesus is the one who holds the world together. He sustains his creation. As the apostle Paul said, in him we live and move and have our being. He keeps this world, this universe together. Can you picture that? The one who humbled himself, Jesus, the Son of God, was held by Mary. And yet, he was the one who holds and who sustains all things. What better choice for the one who would lift up this world out of sin than the one who holds and sustains life and the universe, Jesus, the Son of God. But more than that, the writer to the Hebrews list that this one who is the sole heir of this universe, the sole heir of all things, the one who is and spoke through the Father, the source of life who created the universe, the one who is the shining radiance of God's glory, the one who shows us the Father and sustains all things, also gave the sacrifice for sin. It says, he provided purification for sins the very way he would show the glory of God and the very reason the Son came into this world is that he might be a priest and that he might offer up the perfect sacrifice once and for all to take away the sins of this world. He provided purification for sins as he himself offered up the sacrifice. He did this as he hung on the cross. That's why, that's why it had to be him 
He was the only one who could make such a sacrifice, the spotless, sinless Son of God. And finally, it says, qualification number seven, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Jesus, who was with the Father from eternity and is true God, according to his human nature, ascended into glory. He rose from death after his sacrifice and ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father at his position of authority. And there he sits on his throne. And Jesus, who is the chosen one, will accomplish what the Father has planned because he lives forever as our King and sits forever on his throne, ruling over all things. You see the qualifications that Jesus has, these seven qualities? Consider what this means. If Jesus is the spokesperson for God who's spoken directly to us, we have truth found in his word. If you're wondering where to look for truth this Christmas, look to the Son. And if you ever feel in these last days that maybe as a child of God, you're not going to receive very much, look to the Son. He is the one who will inherit all things and who makes you an heir of salvation. As he gives you his forgiveness, he gives you his promised gifts and blessings. It's all his. And maybe someone might wonder, how could the son accomplish this? How could a man born so long ago fulfill this promise? He's the source of all life in the universe through whom everything was made. He cannot fail as he is the one who created life. He is the one who bought that life back from death. And he is the radiance of God's glory. Those who are yearning to know God, who are wondering what the glory of God means, can look to the face of Jesus. And there they find the shining glory of a God who lowered himself for the sake of sinners like us, to cover our sins, and he sustains all things. If you ever wonder if this Jesus who paid for your sins is able to protect you and help you and work all things for your good, look no further. He sustains all things. He is the perfect one, and he will work everything for your good. He who took your sins away will also carry out every good plan. He will glorify you. He will raise you, and he will bless you forever because Jesus offered a sacrifice. If you ever fear that God loves you or not, look no further than Jesus. There's no doubt of his love as he gave himself as the sacrifice for sins. And when you feel guilt and the weight of sin, yes, there's the curse, but there's Jesus who sets us free. And finally, if you ever wonder that God's plan will be fulfilled, the, the forecast written down in scripture, not just of the weather, but for all creation, it will be fulfilled. He sits at the right hand in majesty. Think about what that means for you as Jesus now sits on his throne. These seven qualifications of the Son of God show us why he's the, the perfect, the only choice, the reason to celebrate his birth because he's the only one who could do all these things because he has the qualifications. The writer of the Hebrews goes on to list for us just what this means as we look at the qualified, perfect spokesperson, the Savior, the Son of God. It lists for us seven times quotes from the Old Testament next. Today we're only going to look at, in brief, and just mention five of them. It starts out by saying, for First of all, to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. These two quotes from the Old Testament both speak of that special relationship that Jesus has eternally with the Father. Jesus is the Son of God. But even according to his human nature, he took on human flesh, was declared to be the Son of God, the Chosen One. And again, he quotes the Old Testament, the third quote, let all angels worship him. We see what this means as God could have chosen no other, no king, no emperor, not even an angel would have done, but all angels now worship him. The savior of the world is the one we pour out our praise and worship to. It could only be the one who deserves worship, God himself. 
And the Son of God is worshipped by all creation. At his birth, the angels sing glory to God. And finally, the, the last two, the fourth and fifth quote from the Old Testament. It says that angels are serving spirits, but the Son, not sent merely to remain a serving spirit. He is the uncreated one, and he was sent to this world to take on a throne and to reign. God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. The man, Jesus, was lifted up, anointed. That means he was chosen by God. And this oil of joy is what he brings to this world. You know, it's kind of interesting when you listen to funny clips like that forecaster or see other blips from the weather forecasters. But when we look at what the sun has done, he will never get it wrong. He cannot and does not fail. He is perfectly qualified and God the Father chose the Son. And the Son, who alone is qualified, carried out this task for you and for this world, this world which is lacking joy. And here we see, God your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. In perfect holiness, the Son of God did this for us. He lifts us up. And there is no way you can fully comprehend or understand what he has done. But you see, he is qualified. And what he has done will be everlasting joy, which he gives you, the Son of God, chosen to be the one who is over and above and for all things. He is the sole heir, but makes you an heir of salvation. He is the source of life, but he gives you life. He is the one who sustains all things by his powerful word. He sustains you and blesses you with that word. He is the one who offered a sacrifice for sin, your sin, to set you free. He is the one who shows us the shining glory of God as we see his life, death, and resurrection. He shows us the heart of God as Jesus displays the perfect mercy, holiness, and love of our God, and he sits in glory. And because the Son had all these qualifications, he did not stare like a deer in the headlights in fear or paralyzed when it came to carry out his work. But because this one was chosen, the Holy Son of God, he went forward to carry out that plan. He accomplished his plan as he faced the darkness of sin in this world. And as he fought off the devil's temptations as he lived a holy life. Jesus did what no one could ever do, but the Holy Son of God could. He carried out the task for which he was chosen be our Savior, and to bring us joy. Praise be to the Son who was chosen to bring us joy.